Welcome back. All right, back to this reptilian business that we have at hand and the need to understand it and to put it to bed. Okay, in the same way that every culture or religion has a creation story, we also have other archetypal topics and projections and stories. If any of you have listened to my Joy of Knowing series, specifically the video called Unasleep Sci-Fi Channel, you'll hear me speak about what we perceive as aliens or UFOs and ETs or really actually archetypal patterns, not unlike your mother and father are also archetypal patterns. I mean, right now, everybody has a mother and a father, whether we meet them or not. We project them into our awareness in some capacity when we desire to appear on the storyboard. So, as we've already mentioned, it seems we tend to manifest and project aliens in some capacity whenever we are about to bump up to a new level of learning because it is our unconscious way of expressing this presence of higher knowing that we sense. And whether we fear it or welcome it determines the tone of this potential manifestation. If you're afraid of it, this will manifest in a way that accommodates that fear. Or if you aren't afraid, your experience will be benign and amazing and often far less intrusive. In either case, it follows your prescribed tone. Do you see? And we do this individually as well as collectively. For example, one might interpret that a UFO led the wise men to the Christ child. But most don't realize that this archetypal manifestation of reptilians was also recorded in the Bible in an equally popular story. It was. In the Garden of Eden, who was it that told Eve to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? It was Mr. Reptile, wasn't it? In fact, Mr. Reptile had the dubious honor of being the first to introduce, drum roll please, the conspiracy theory. Mr. Reptile sold the very first conspiracy theory ever, the first snake oil, if you'll forgive me, to a naive and unsuspecting audience. He told Eve that she was being controlled, that God, standing in for the Illuminati in Mr. Reptile's story, told them not to eat of it because he wanted to keep them down. Because if they ate of it, then their eyes would be opened and they would be like God. Does this sound familiar? Isn't this the same story we have been telling ourselves over and over and over? Apparently, literally, since the beginning of time. And we will continue to tell ourselves this story until we end it correctly with the truth. And so, this story is the theme of our reality whether we realize it or not. I mean, you can't open a web page without seeing a conspiracy theory. Someone, somewhere, is trying to keep you down, or mislead you, or poison you, or kill you, or whatever. Someone, somewhere, has control over you, they warn, and this is true. But not because someone has taken your free will away. Not at all. That is impossible. We have handed it over on a silver platter because we are still listening to Mr. Reptile and worse yet, we're still blaming him for the state of affairs that we're in. We are still trying to blame him for our actions. The serpent deceived me and I ate, we whine, and we continue to attempt to pass the buck. But we are still in the Garden of Eden, people, being called into accountability for our actions and we are still trying to blame poor Mr. Reptile. Well, for a while we did morph him into Satan, but we depicted Satan with a snake-like tail and tongue and eyes so we wouldn't forget who he really was. And whatever is wrong in our world, it isn't our fault. Oh no, it's Satan's. <laughs> it's Mr. Reptile's doing. It's not ours. Right. 
And so, for many of us at a certain level of awareness, Mr. Reptile, or the reptilians as they're sometimes labeled in modern day belief structures, are still being blamed for all of the Pandora's boxes that we have opened. Adam and Eve manifested the first reptilian manipulator when they were presented the opportunity to know more as they desired their eyes to be opened and be like God. Do you see this pattern? Can you see this? The very first time that man moved toward expanding his awareness, this archetype was there to accommodate, this time in the form of a deceiving reptile, because in their case, they had fear in their hearts because God had already cautioned them not to eat of it. It's a bad trip, he said. Don't do it. But we did. And then we tried to blame the snake for our doing. So, what I want you to see is that the archetype was there even then. Whether you believe that the Bible is literal or metaphorical doesn't matter to me. It's still a story pointing to the beginning of this dimension. And the appearance of this archetype goes back that far. It goes back to the beginning of the beginning. And we're still bringing him forward today. Now, I know most of you listening here today are well aware of oneness and how it is all that truly exists. I know you understand that. You get it intellectually, and perhaps you even intellectually agree with it. But here is another point that might be difficult for many of you to hear, but I have to say it anyway, and here it is. If you are still embroiled in any conspiracy theory in any capacity, First off, the attention that you're giving it, which, by the way, is actually feeding it and creating it and causing it to manifest in your reality, that attention is absolute, verifiable proof that you still have hidden issues of duality. Oh yes, it is. You do not truly see the one yet. You may know of it, you may even agree with it intellectually, but you do not truly know it. It is not a part of you yet. It has not become your inescapable reality. Because when light enters the room, darkness disappears. My, this is a hard thing to see, isn't it? Because you might intellectually understand the concept of oneness and you may agree with it, but it may not have moved deeper within you so that it becomes your utter, inescapable reality. And in fact, your attention to all these other things that you fear is actually helping to create them and grow them and bring them forward more and more prominently into your world, onto your cave wall. You're giving it legs. But it's not there to punish you, but rather so that you may become aware of what you are doing and reconcile it. Please join me for the next part.